Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to put the Thingino open source firmware on this companion cube. I mean, Wisecam version 2. What's up guys, it's Josh from the WL Tech Blog. In today's video, we're going to put the Thingino open source firmware on this Wisecam version 2, also known as a Neo Smart Cam. And we're going to do it using my brand new updated SD card image based installer. If you're new to this channel, my name is Josh. I make videos about Linux, open source, hardware hacking, AI, and the Thingino open source firmware project. If you're not familiar with Thingino, I've got an introduction video over here. Thingino is an open source firmware replacement for cameras using Ingenic processors that removes them from manufacturers' cloud ecosystem and puts you back in control of your devices and your data. We support over a hundred different cameras and we support the industry standard protocols, which is perfect for people using NVRs like Frigate, Home Assistant, or any of the other great choices that also use the standard protocols. So today I've got a fresh Wisecam version 2 and it's running the factory firmware, but we're going to change that together. We're going to do this in real time, starting from scratch, so you can follow along at home. For this process, you're going to need an SD card, a micro SD card that's at least 128 megabytes. Anything over that is just fine. And we're going to set up that SD card in Windows. So let's jump over to Windows. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we need to do is download Etcher. If you already have Rufus or something like that installed, you can use that instead. One thing nice about Etcher is it lets you flash directly from a zip file, so you can skip the step of unzipping it. So let's go ahead and pop our SD card in to get it ready. And on Etcher, you can pick your operating system and platform. This works with a bunch of different operating systems, so you should be able to run Etcher pretty much regardless of what you're using. So go ahead and get that downloaded, then jump over to the GitHub Thingino installers page, which I've got a link to that in the video description. We're gonna go into the Wisecam 2 folder and we wanna grab the Wisecam 2 sd.zip. Now I also have instructions here, make sure and review those because if something changes in the process, this will be kept up to date much more quickly than getting a new video up. So we'll go ahead and click on our zip file here and over here, click on the download raw file button and that'll get the firmware downloaded for us. All right, now once we have the files downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and open Etcher. Get our file manager, run Etcher. All right, so we're gonna do a flash from file and in our downloads, we're going to pick the Wisecam 2 SD zip file. Go ahead and hit open on that. All right, once we get the image chosen, we're going to choose our device, which is our SD card. And we're going to click on flash. Now, since it's going to make sure we will allow it to make changes to the device, and now the actual upgrade image is not very big, so it only takes a moment to do the flash. Decompresses the zip file. Now we're flashing the SD card. And we're validating the data that we flashed. And we just wait for it to sync up and say that we're done. There we go, flash is complete. At this point, we can go ahead and pop the SD card out and we're done with Windows. All right, we're back again. We've got our camera ready here. Let's go ahead and pop in our freshly written SD card. It only goes in one direction, so make sure you get that right. And we're gonna push it until it clicks, which it did. Now the process here, we have our setup button down here. We're gonna hold that down while we plug the power in on the back. Now there's a little LED on the back here. We're gonna continue holding until that light goes solid blue. Then we're gonna let go of the button. 
And as it goes, I'm going to walk you through exactly what steps are being taken by the installer. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to hold the button and we're going to plug in the power. We've got amber and we've got blue. So we let go. All right, so the first thing the installer does is if you have a old enough version, it's going to load a file called demo.bin, and that's going to upgrade your bootloader. Once that's done, it's going to find another file on there that is a specially named file with a Linux kernel and a script that we've written that will go through and identify which hardware you have. There's a couple of different versions of this camera, and it's going to set up the correct firmware, which is already included on the SD card, so that it can be flashed. Then it's going to update the bootloader, and it's going to take a backup of your factory firmware as well. So if you need to be able to go back to the WISE cloud at some point, you actually need the exact firmware off of this device in order to do that. So make sure you copy that file off. It's called combinedbackup.bin. Now, once that's done, it's going to reboot the camera and it's going to automatically flash the firmware file from within the bootloader. So you see, we've got a lot of LED blinking going on here, but it's a pretty quick process. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our phone out to be ready for this once it comes up. So here I've got my Android phone and we're just going to open up our Wi-Fi network list. And we're gonna keep our eye out for a network that starts with Fingino. That's gonna be our config Wi-Fi network. Now we are doing this in real time. I'm not fast forwarding here. So this process takes about two, three minutes. And it should be showing up soon. We've got another minute or so left on flashing this camera. So this is a good time to mention that only about 12% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. We're coming up on a big milestone with the channel and it really does help us out if you're subscribed. I've got a ton of videos in the works you won't want to miss. So make sure to hit that button to follow along. All right. Let's heard another click. I've also got a couple of videos coming that are based on suggestions from viewers. So for sure, if you've got any ideas for a fun video, put it down below. I appreciate that. And there we go. We have a Fingino network on our list. Now we're going to go ahead and join that network on most devices. It's going to go ahead and take you to the config portal automatically. If it doesn't, you can open your browser and put in 172.16.0.1. That'll take you to the same page. Now on this page, it asks you for your root password and your Wi-Fi credentials. So while we type those in, Remember, this only works with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks, so make sure you're putting the credentials for one of those. And the root password that you put in is going to be used for logging into the web UI or if you use SSH. So you want to make sure you set something good there. And the host name, if your router automatically does DNS resolution, your host name will be able to take you to your camera directly. All right, so I've got all that information put in. We hit confirm, and then we're going to hit proceed after we review those settings. Everything looks good here. So there we go, the camera is now rebooting. Now I'll show you a trick in a second. Once it comes back up and has a chance to connect to the Wi-Fi network, the feature we added in a little ways back. You can go to your router and look at your clients list and get the IP address of your camera from there. But what we're going to do, we're going to wait for the blue LED to stop blinking. This is still in the boot up stages. 
And this is the first boot, so it has a couple extra things to do. All right, it's done blinking. Now we come down here and we just tap the setup button. Address is 192.168.82.247. All right, and now we have the IP address of the camera. So we just punch that right into our web browser. Now that we're back on our regular Wi-Fi. And it'll prompt you for your root password username root and the password that you just set up and go ahead and sign in and here we have live view from our camera now go ahead and check out all the options in the menu here there's a lot of stuff that you can do directly in the web ui notice that the preview image is not a smooth video this is just for preview you actually want to use the rtsp stream to get a nice smooth video stream. So there we go, that was easy. We have a fresh WiseCam version two running the Thingino open source firmware. Now, if you run into any issues flashing it or just want to join in discussion with the project, make sure to jump in on our Discord channel. I've got that linked in the video description below. The WiseCam version 2 is not a current model and not something you should be going out and buying brand new. But a lot of folks already have these or they have the Neo Smart Cam where Neos went belly up and all their cameras turned into paperweights unless you flash them with the Thingino open source firmware. I do have other devices that I recommend. Check out the link in the video description for my favorite camera. Also, you can check out other videos on my channel for devices that I've built installers for. They're just as easy to do as this one was. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give me a thumbs up. If you like this sort of content, make sure to hit subscribe. We'd love to have you over at our Discord channel and put any questions or comments you might have down in the video description below. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. And until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags.